folks, Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and I know there was some discussion in the last video about what our first trip might be in the Kimbo. Well, turns out I took it on a solo trip across Colorado all the way to Telluride on the other side of the state. I had the opportunity to attend a friend's memorial service. So that was really important to me. I needed to go midweek and Brian couldn't go because he had to work. Not only was my first trip by myself camping, but it was my first trip driving Brian's truck with the Kimbo on the back. And the other thing was that our Kimbo is a base model. So you're probably wondering, how does camping go if you're not fully loaded in the thing? Well, I'll show you what I did. The first thing I did was stay at a campground. I wanted to have access to bathrooms, so I definitely uh, booked a campground site right in the town in Telluride. If you ever do visit, you will want to stay in the town park. And this is the big question people were asking about a bathroom. Now, I know when you're camping at a campground, you have access to bathrooms, but sometimes in the middle of the night, you don't feel like walking out of your camper to go use the facilities out in the dark. So it's nice to have a potty option. So this was my option. I used a kitty litter bucket, filled it with some kitty litter and used that during the night as needed. It worked out great. And the storage feature inside of the Kimbo was a great place to store this. The other thing I brought with me was a cooler. So we don't have a refrigerator system yet and I wanted to carry some food. So I went the old fashioned way. We have a smaller sized cooler. So I packed it full of snacks for the trip and to last me for breakfast for a couple of days. Overall, I'll say the drive was actually pretty easy. Um, I didn't really notice that much difference driving with the camper on the back of the truck. As far as maneuverability, braking, I mean, I gave myself a little bit more time braking, but I didn't notice a huge difference. The only time where I really felt like I could tell there was something on the back was going through canyon areas where there was a lot of wind. And sometimes I could tell that I had a higher profile. I was like, oh, I could feel that wind gust a lot more than maybe if I didn't have the camper on the back. The entire drive was about seven hours. Entirely, it was about over 600 miles. And I th it went really, really smooth. I didn't have any problems with tires or with power in the truck, you know, going up hills and such. Um, as far as gas mileage, Brian had calculated this before when we came back from Washington with it. And he was thinking that it was somewhere around 13 miles per gallon. Now that's with the leg stanchions on there. So taking, you, you might be able to remove those and make the front a little bit more aerodynamic. And you might be able to get your miles per gallon a little bit higher. I think it also depends on the way that you drive and how many hills there are. So because it was a social trip and I wasn't going for the purpose of camping, I traveled really lightly. I didn't bring anything special related to camping. Um, um, I brought the cooler, which I put on the floor right here. And then in the storage is where I put my potty and that folds up that that fit the bucket really easily. You can see I also have a huge extension cord in there because my plan was to bring an electric kettle so I could make tea in the morning. And then they've got the, de uh, the dehumidifier in there as well. And on the bed, I had a quilt and a big thick sheepskin because I thought, you know, if you ever get cold, you're never going to get that cold that a sheepskin can't keep you warm. I had the battery pack here so I could turn on uh, lights and plug in my computer if I wanted to. And then I put my bag of clothes right over here. Basically, I didn't really stay in the unit very much except for sleeping at night. But interestingly, um, it was really hot during the day. Telluride is over 8,000 feet in elevation. It's very similar to home. The temperatures drop really low at night. So it was warm in the uh, camper during the day. And at night, when I was going to bed, it was about 60 degrees. Well, four more hours into the night, 60 degrees turned into 55 degrees. And I was getting chilly. I did not turn on the stove. So you see the stove is right here. I thought I was going to stay nice and cozy. Well, the joke was on me. I ended up crawling underneath the sheepskin at night just to stay warm. I thought about turning on the stove, but one thing I did forget because I wasn't thinking I was going to need it was that I hadn't turned the propane on outside. So part of me did not want to exit the camper to turn the propane on to turn on the stove. And that's a lesson learned for myself is even if you don't think you're going to need it, you might want to turn on that propane just so you don't have to get out of the camper. I thought I was going to be able to plug into an RV hookup, but they didn't have it at the campground. So I thought I might be able to plug in my electric kettle to warm up some hot tea. Well, that didn't happen either because it did not support my electric kettle. There's too many, uh, too much wattage required for the electric kettles. I'm going to show you guys what I wished I had. Okay. We ended up getting this 
the week after my trip. But good fortune did shine upon me and we heard from the company Stoke Voltaics. They sent us Jewel, which is a RV style electric kettle. I think the design is really cool. When you take a look at it, it's really smartly done. The entire system is insulated. So it's almost got like its own built-in koozie. And then it has a lid right here with a little handle because you can imagine the lid might get hot with some boiling water coming through it. And then you've got on the inside, sort of the way it's packed is your instruction booklet, a cool little sticker, and then your power cord. The power cord goes right here on one end, and then the other end will plug into your power supply. There's three settings on it, which are drink, eat, and pop. So I was amazed to find out that in or it doesn't just boil water, but you could also heat up soup or you can pop popcorn. There's some fill lines in here, so it's showing you how many ounces of water that you're putting in. Let's see how it does for boiling water. Maybe I can make a cup of tea. And I'm plugging this into a 500 watt portable battery. Pouring in just enough water for one cup of tea. Putting on a lid. And then making sure it's set to drink. And then press the button. The unit has a neat strap handle, which I think is great because it can go flat, doesn't take up a lot of room, and it's also not going to conduct any kind of heat. It also has a cool hook right here if you wanted to hang it for storage. I can tell you it is taking a lot of power. The, bat, the portable battery started at 91% and it is down to 77%. So the entire process took about five minutes. Awesome. I really wanna test out this cool function of popcorn. So sliding it over to pop over here. Now, um, in the directions, it shows that you can use the lid to measure out your ingredients. There's a little area right here to measure your oil. Um, I'll save you the time and tell you it's about a teaspoon worth of oil, and you can use one shallow lid for your popcorn kernels. That turns out to be about a quarter cup. If you do use the lid, it's a little bit more awkward. Sometimes the kernels get everywhere trying to scoop them up. There's a little hole right here. Sometimes the kernels fall through, so it might be easier to just have your quarter cup already measured if you're going to be using the popcorn function. Same with your oil. So the oil goes in first and then you can add your popcorn. Putting the lid on and then turning it on. Hit the button. Now there is a hole in the middle of the lid and that's for the popcorn accessory if you want to stir your kernels while they're getting hot. But I'm just going to do a little bit of a shake. Coat your kernels that way. So right now it's only drawing 112 watts. It's been about five minutes. I think I just heard the first pop. I don't hear any more popping. Should we check and see how it's doing? Ah, popcorn. <laughs> you know, it's great. You don't necessarily have to have every single thing uh, when you're camping. Like what if you don't have a cook fire? What if you don't have a camp stove? What if you don't have a kettle? and you still wanna have some of the niceties of home. So we definitely appreciate Stoke Votakes for sending out the jewel for us to try out, making some tea and making a little snack. You know, I'll have some links in the video description if you guys wanna check out the jewel. So I definitely wish I had had this on my trip. So all in all, it definitely was successful. One thing I learned is that it's something I could do by myself, right? I can definitely drive the truck. I can definitely handle it. I can definitely handle operating the camper. Um, and two, you don't need to necessarily have all the amenities that are included with it. You can still have a bare bones camping trip. But in the next video, we're going to show you guys some of the ads that we are going to add in. So what we're choosing for a refrigerator, how we're going to do our bikes, what we're going to do for a potty, because we're not always going to be using kitty litter. But for the purposes for what it was, it worked out great for me. I got to see a lot of old friends and make some really special memories. So it was really important that I took that trip and the camper did the job. So just a testament that the base model is still a viable option for camping. You can still make it work. It might be easier if you have a campground, but... Uh, for my intents and purposes, it worked out just right. It might be Brian's turn next weekend. So thanks guys, if you wanna hear more about what we're doing with the Kimbo and our camper, we're gonna have a whole video series coming out about that. Uh, what we're doing for upgrades, what Brian's designing for cabinetry, and we'll see how we turn our base model into a top model. Hit subscribe to find out how it all turns out. See you guys, bye-bye. Well, this was my potty option. I had a big... Oh. All right guys, subscribe before...